just made it to White Mountain Peak Trailhead, which for anyone watching this that doesn't know where the hell that is, it's in California, um, basically east of the Sierras. I mean, you can call it the Eastern Sierras, but think about where Mount Whitney is. It's kind of, if you were looking off the summit, it's kind of the other mountain range you're looking at. Um, there's a research center up here that they're doing plant stuff with and whatever. So there's actually, you know, a road coming up here. There's actually a vault toilet here, which is surprising. But where I sit, it's 11,600 feet. So I'm going to sleep here tonight in the vehicle um, in the back. So the video I made before this, uh, we tried to do this. It was actually last weekend. It wasn't that long ago um, or like four days ago. And the weather changed right at the last minute. And um, it was raining low. So, you know, that means snow and high. So we ended up doing some mountains in Tioga Pass uh, near Yosemite and got kicked off of one of them too. It was just, you know, they say like in mountaineering, you know, you have to know when to call it. And while those mountains out there were only about 12,000 feet, you know, you don't want to get caught in something up there. These, the ones we're doing tomorrow, uh, White Mountain Peak is, I think, 14,250. And then we're doing two unnamed peaks uh, on the other side of that that are like 13.9 and whatnot. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to eat right now, get some fuel, and just start to prep this area back here to uh, sleep in. So I'm going to go to sleep here soon. The sun's going down, as you can see, um, in the vehicle now closed up. Probably put the heat on for a few seconds before I go to sleep. But um, it'll be pretty cold here tonight. I'm guessing in the low 30s, high 20s with the wind and all that. But um, I wanted to talk about real quick when it comes to the mine resistance. So something I've been pondering lately, especially the last few days, something I've dealt with for a lot of years is the problems themselves, you know, the things that are triggering us or causing the resistance aren't actually the issue. It's the resisting of them. So we have, you know, situations in our life that we don't like or we don't agree with or we want things to change. So we resist them. But the reality is, in the moment, they're not supposed to be different. That's why they are what they are. So resisting them is what causes the issues. And, and another good angle here to look at, and it's missed in a lot of these teachings and a lot of these things, is that, you know, we have to be able to take these things in as they happen, not resist them, but also know that they can change. In other words, we sit here and we say, well, we want things to be different now. There's no way for them to be different now. So we have to watch our language because what we're really saying is that we want things to be different in the future or coming up or next time. But now is now. And then there'll be another now. But for right now, they actually can't change because if they were supposed to be different, they would be different. But that does not mean that they can't change down the road. So that comes into accepting, which is not resisting, and then saying, okay, I want to go in another direction. So that's a key point because we, we fight back because we want it to be different now. But it can't be because now is what it is. You want it to be different later. And now you take the moves to make that happen. So think on it, you know, contemplate it. Resisting the problem is the problem. It's not necessarily 
the issue at hand. You know what I mean? Like if you were some, you know, you took some magic pill, it's like you wouldn't resist the situation as much and then it wouldn't be as much of a problem. So it's just something to contemplate because most of our problems, if not all of them, are coming from resistance. White Mountain Peak, 14,250, I think. Um, we'll hang up here for a minute and then probably head, uh, we're gonna head down and hit two unnamed peaks beyond this and uh, go from there, but we made it, it's all good. So we got it done, White Mountain Peak in California and the two peaks beyond them, which are like right under 14,000 feet. 
the day went good. Um, this is this was actually yesterday, so this was unplanned. But I ended up doing the climb with my partner, and then I just basically came off the mountain. Because anyone who's been there, it's an hour and a half to get off the mountain. So you basically have to drive from Big Pine, California, which is south of Bishop. You have to drive basically an hour and a half to the trailhead, which is 11,600 feet. So we got back and we came down and I actually just pulled over in, uh, around Mammoth and just stayed another night in the car. And then I forgot my debit card at this place where I got a burger, so I had to just drive back. So I'm going back up towards, um, uh, towards the lake, uh, Tahoe and I'm in Bishop again now because I forgot my card. So went fine. There's still some modifications I need to do to the vehicle. Anyone watching this that, you know, sleeps in their vehicle, I'm still somewhat new to it. But, um, you know, it's just a good option to be able to pull over wherever you want and sleep after especially long days. But um, I talked before about resistance. Just contemplate it. Cause, you know that's what we're doing and I see it on the mountains I see it even when I had to come and get my debit card you know we resist everything that's right in front of us and that's where we get our problems so I'll have more of these videos coming and uh, you know more camping stuff and all that so I'll see you next time